Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maureen Strickland. I'm the Social Enterprise Development Specialist at um, Social Enterprise and Entrepreneurship One Social Enterprise Partnership in Northern in the Northern Region of Ontario. And today, this webinar at 12 noon is on asset mapping, and it's a guide for business developers and social entrepreneurs. Um, as we've done with the previous webinars, I will go over the one partnership for those who might be new to the webinar series. And then we will launch into um, very specifically how you could run an asset mapping session in your own community and how it relates to um, the development, how it could relate to the development of social enterprises in your community. Um, I have Zach Lowe here today. He's the research assistant at Nordic Institute and he's monitoring the chat box in case you have any questions. Everybody is on mute, so if you have a question, uh, you can write it in the chat box and Zach will make sure that I have an opportunity to answer it before the webinar is done. Uh, this webinar should take about half an hour. So, a description of the Northern, just trying to get rid of the bar on the top of my page, just a second, if I can. No, oh, I can't seem to, so I'll just keep going. Um, the Northern Region Partnership. Um, Nordic Institute is the lead on this partnership. The partnership itself is designed to support social entrepreneurship in Northern Ontario. Nordic Institute is a community economic development uh, research institute that's based at Algoma University and affiliated with the community economic and social development diploma or degree program here. The um, other members of the partnership are these uh, small business enterprise centers. Um, so the member on our steering committee is the Timmins uh, Small Business Enterprise Center. We also have the Innovation Centers in Northern Ontario and our steering committee member is Northwest Innovation Center out of Thunder Bay. And we also have the Campus Linked Accelerators. They are involved with youth entrepreneurship and we have a U-Launch based out of Sault Ste. Marie. As well, we have another not-for-profit partner, uh, Paro Center for Women's Enterprise based out of um, Thunder Bay. And the goal of the partnership it's funded by the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development and Growth to support development of social enterprises and entrepreneurs in the region by working directly with serv service providers that are already in the region. So um, social enterprises can go to their one, um, the one organizations in the region and get support. Our area covers all of uh, Northern Ontario from Perry Sound to the Manitoba border along the James Bay coast. And these webinars are a great way for people who live in more remote and rural regions of our uh, province to get the same information. So we always talk about what is a social enterprise at the beginning of each of these webinars. Um, and I'll tie this into how this relates to community asset mapping. Uh, so social enterprises have a mission to address social, environmental, economic, or cultural challenges by reinvesting their profits above their operational expenses back into the mission, and they measure their success. Social enterprise itself is not a business form. It takes on other traditional business forms, such as not-for-profit, cooperatives, and sole proprietorships. So how the community asset mapping can um, tie into social entrepreneurship is that it's a way of um, finding out areas of energy and strength in your community where there would be opportunity there to develop to, to meet one of these community needs and then develop a social enterprise around it um, and hopefully that will become clear as we walk through the process so what are community assets um, assets are strengths and advantages that that a community has that they want to keep building on um, and sustaining for their future so these assets could be natural assets. Um, you know, they could have they could have beautiful parks or be adjacent to um, a um, a landscape that people like to protect and use. For instance, I live on Manitoulin Island um, in the township of Billings, and Kagawong has the beautiful Kagawong River and the Bri and Bridalville Falls in the middle of the village. That's definitely a core natural asset of that township. Um, Financial assets could obviously be um, access to investment in your community. Uh, maybe your community has a, um, a community foundation that supports 
activities in your community. Social aspects, social assets are, you know, those volunteers in your community, for instance, who do all that, uh, you know, they're organizing the community dinners and the, uh, you know, the special winter fast weekends. Um, those are social assets in your community. Cultural assets would be um, potentially like in Sudbury, for instance, um, they're just starting to build Place des Arts, which is a Francophone cultural center in the city. And that is definitely going to be a cultural asset. And that was built because of the social assets in Sudbury who worked uh, to get that off the ground. Uh, built assets could be, um, you know, your uh, community arena or your library, um, your playground in your park, that type of thing. And then, of course, public assets are those that are owned by the public. Again, uh, parks, uh, schools, um, arenas, gymnasiums, anything that is uh, a public asset in your community. And then intangible assets. Well, this is interesting. So what would be an intangible asset? Um, again, I'm from Manitoulin Island, and I definitely feel that something that is intangible there comes from the fact that it is an island. Um, you can't put your finger on it, but it makes that island special. Um, and it certainly draws a lot of people to Manitoulin. Um, so that hopefully gives you an overview of what kinds of things could be community assets. So asset or strengths mapping. Um, it's a key foundation for working with communities in strategic planning and development of social and economic initiatives. So definitely it is very logical that it would be an element of, of community planning, of strategic planning. Um, but as I said, it also can be used as a way of incubating new ideas for social enterprise. So in some ways, the asset, um, community asset mapping is an activity that you would likely take um, when you're first kind of wanting to kickstart a social entrepreneurship culture in your community because it's a way of people coming together and looking at where social enterprises could happen. Um, so the nuts and bolts, how does it work? If you're a, a community member, you want to um, uh, maybe organize a community asset mapping in your community or you're an economic development officer um, listening to this webinar, a business development officer. Uh, now we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of how you would um, uh, run a community asset mapping session, but here are some of the other um, positives that come out of doing an asset mapping session. You build community, you're bringing together people to talk about the strengths in their community. You're supporting consensus building in the community by bringing people together. They, you know, they have this conversation and they realize, oh yeah, we do have a strong arts community or we do have a strong, um, you know, people looking at local food security, that, that this type of thing. By talking about your strengths together, it builds community confidence, um, builds community identity, and also is a way of acknowledging those achievements that you have um, accomplished in your communities. It engages and empowers people who come out to um, continue to be involved in their community, and it increases social capital by um, identifying these assets and really making tangible those social assets in your community. Um, we're going to go through the steps, but we do have on our webpage, and we were doing, we're doing a uh, navigation of our webpage at one o'clock today in a webinar, but we do have this guide, a facilitator's guide to community asset mapping on our webpage. You can download it off there in a PDF format. Okay, so the nuts and bolts, how do you run a community asset mapping um, uh, session? You bring together a diverse group of people from your community. Give yourself up to two hours. Usually after two hours, people are starting to get antsy. Um, so it's good to uh, have the session not go too long. You want to keep everybody energized, um, you know, not bore them near the end. So bring together and try to get a, a very good cross section of people in your community. Then everybody are going, you're going to, in, you're going to do the introductions. Everybody has a chance to introduce themselves. The person leading the session, the facilitator, will walk through the asset mapping process as I have done the overview just prior here. 
Um, you can do an icebreaker if you want. Uh, sometimes, you know, a pretty simple icebreaker is to have people talk to the person next to them if they don't know them for a couple of minutes and then they introduce each other or they could just talk to each, just make them talk to each other for a few minutes and uh, leave it at that. Um, then you're going to review the agenda. It's always good to review an agenda prior to any session. Um, and we have other examples of icebreakers and agendas in the, uh, the facilitator's guide. Okay, then you kind of set the ground rules for everybody in the room so that people will um, feel, feel comfortable um, participating. You ask that participants are respectful of one another's views and opinions. Also make it clear that you would like everybody to only, like one person speaks at a time, you wait till somebody's done, no jumping in, interrupting. And you also make it very clear that there are no right or wrong answers, that people are sharing their, um, their personal views as well as their experience in the community. And also that if somebody doesn't wanna talk, that's okay too. So you make it so that everybody is comfortable in the, uh, in the setting. The other thing to do, and hopefully you would have done this actually prior to starting the meeting, but you're going to need a few uh, materials to run your meeting. You want to get flip chart paper. If you have a big whiteboard in the meeting room, that's fine too. Uh, you're going to need post-it notes, markers, that kind of thing. Uh, ideally, you want to, one person facilitates, another person's taking the notes. Um, that way, the person taking the notes um, will be able to capture everything because facilitation itself is, um, uh, you know, takes, you can't be taking the notes and facilitating. Typically, it's good to have one of each. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is hand out notes and markers to everybody who's come out to your community asset mapping session. And then what you're going to do is give them time. I, I would say 10 minutes. Um, that's a lot of time. You might even be able to get away with five. Um, you ask each person individually to write down all the strengths and assets that they feel the community has, and you want them to put only one asset on each post-it note. So for instance, if I was thinking about this village, community, township that I live in, and um, I was writing down some of the assets, on one post-it note, I would put Kagawong River. On a second post-it note, I would put um, uh, grassroots community um, committees because we have, and we have like a very active recreational committee made up all of volunteers. On a third one, I would have strong interest in, um, strong community interest in renewable energy. So you see one asset per post-it note. And again, this is an individual activity. They'll have an opportunity later to share their, um, to share their uh, ideas. And this is a way of, um, it's a quiet activity, it's a reflective activity. So once everybody's done, and you can monitor the room, like it might not take 10 minutes when everybody's done, stop, move on to the next, uh, the next stage of this. Um, so one at a time, participants go up and place their post-it note on a piece of flip chart paper and talk about what they have determined is an asset, um, have them speak to each item as they do so. First, so for instance, if it was me, I put up my post-it note about the Kagawong River, and I say, I feel this is a, uh, an asset in our community because um, it not only, from an economic development point of view, it attracts people to the community, but from a natural point of view, it's still a uh, healthy ecosystem that we want to protect um, because we know we have the salmon run, the smelt, um, so there's kind of so I'm so there's two reasons why I've chosen it uh, chosen it as an asset. So you encourage people to talk a little bit more about what's behind the word on the post-it note. Okay, so once everybody's done, say you've had a group of about twelve people, um, you make sure that the people in the room, if they've thought of something else, give them the opportunity to add that. Um, once that's finished, if everybody has finished uh, talking about their individual ones, you then kind of look at it from more a holistic point of view and you ask them where they see where the assets and strengths might be supporting each other. Um, and then kind of group them on the board. So for instance, in this example I'm using, uh, I've put the Kagawong River on, 
somebody else may have put um, uh, we have a lot of um, lakes in our township. Um, so we might put that next to the Kagawong River. Somebody else might have noted that we have um, underused uh, farmland that's going back to forest, put that together. So we're grouping them as this happens. We also want to ask the question, are any of these assets and strengths at risk? Um, maybe there's been an issue around the river with uh, littering, for instance. So we want to make note of that. Um, so we're kind of starting to develop uh, groups and themes here. Then, once we've done that kind of group activity, we then move on to the next step, which is um, asking people if they have any other final comments or thoughts on what has happened. So you can imagine that now there would be a room, space on the wall with different groups. So we might have a group, as I've been talking about, the natural environment kind of things. We may have a group on arts and culture, for instance. We might have a group on built buildings and built assets. So we have some, a few themes going on here. Okay, so now the facilitator and the note taker will then assemble the final map. So typically, um, you could do this to get, like, the, depending on how what how long this has taken, people what sense of you got to set you have to like take a read of the room. People at this point might be ready to leave and have you send them a report, or they may want to stay as you look at the groupings and strengths that have been identified. So the example here is a community that clearly the assets that were identified were around the theme of arts and culture. So we had public libraries. Uh, cultural attractions, art-based business, support from the municipality in the cultural planning um, and other art-related projects. We had artists, etc. So in that community, they, pe the people identified on their post-it notes these these things in the outer ring, and then the theme was found to be arts and culture. Um, so you can imagine that in any community, there's going to be a number of themes that have been identified. So at this point, you want to report back to the people and the community. Um, and you can do that by either doing a written report um, on the community asset mapping activity, or you might want to come back and report in person on what you found. And the idea here is that those themes that have come out, the idea of these strengths in your community, that's where you have energy in your community and you have opportunity for potentially um, developing social enterprise. So for instance, in this kind of example, I've been talking to you about the community where I'm from um, with the great natural assets. Well, maybe there's an opportunity there for an eco experiential tourism social enterprise that comes out of that. Um, or if you are in a community where you've identified um, that arts is a is a, uh, you have a lot of artisans um, and arts is a theme, well maybe there's an opportunity for a producer co-op for those artisans to come together to sell their, their um, sell and market their wares together. So you can see how looking at these strengths can help you identify potential um, opportunities for social enterprise. And at this point, the people who have, who have come, if they, are, if they have an entrepreneurial spirit, they may want to pursue um, this idea of a social enterprise more fully and then they would sort of go into the beginning webinars in this series they might want to watch this social enterprise 101 and then start developing their idea is it a go is it a not go so you can see the progression here how the community asset mapping can can um, help sow the seeds of social enterprise in your community so that wraps up step-by-step step, how you would run a community asset mapping session. Certainly if you wanted to do this, the facilitator's guide is very excellent. It can help guide you through it as well. We do ask, um, Zach would have put the, um, the uh, link for the survey, uh, post-training evaluation survey in the chat box. We'd like it if you could go in and provide us some feedback. Um, and um, I'll see now if there's any uh, 
further questions around uh, community asset mapping? None yet? Okay, so we'll wait a few, uh, 15 or 20 seconds to give you a chance to type in a question um, if you have one. And if not, uh, we are doing a navigation of the web page at um, one o'clock. And our final webinar in this nine webinar series is at two o'clock. And it is a uh, very short webinar, probably 15 minutes, just on how you might want to go about um, starting a grassroots peer circle, peer mentoring circle in your community um, to support yourself with other social entrepreneurs in the community. Any questions? Nope. Okay. So we will sign off and be back here at one o'clock with the navigating our webpage and our resources. Thank you.